tagliata messa fuori c'è Pirlo 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 ancora Pirlo di Tecco tiro Hello and welcome to the Milan Talk podcast. I'm your host, Sarit Paul, and unfortunately, we've got a 2 0 defeat to Arsenal to discuss tonight in the first leg of our last 16 Europa League clash. Goals from Henrik Mikatari and Aaron Ramsey did damage for the Gunners, who are now in full control of the tie. And ultimately, Milan have got it all to do now in the second leg at the Emirates next week if they have any chance of going through to the next round. Looking at the positives and negatives, surprisingly, I have taken away a couple of positives from the game. I think Arsenal should really be out of sight at this point. They had many chances in the first half to be at least three or four up. We got away with it. Fortunately, it wasn't such a heavy defeat, even though it is still really disappointing to come away with a 2-0 loss. Uh, And ultimately, I think it's also a really big learning curve for the players. Even though they've struggled in recent weeks, the likes of Ozil, Mkhitaryan and Koscielny stepped up in a big European game to show that big game experience on a European stage. That's something that we lack at this point. A lot of young players in there, so... Provided we can learn from it, we can improve, we can get better, there is a positive there as well. Uh, whether or not we can learn quick enough to improve next week is a completely different story, so we'll have to wait and see whether or not we can make that, those adjustments and uh, put in a better performance next week. Negatives, of course, there are many. Considering our 13-game unbeaten run, I think we looked a shadow of the team that put together that unbeaten run. Uh, we played like we looked like we were playing with fear for the, most of the first half. There was no composure on the ball. I struggled throughout the game to really pick out a sustained period of play where we played good football, where we had the ball down, we were passing it well, we were creating opportunities. Yes, we had chances, which we spurned, but I just don't feel as though we impressed from a footballing aspect at all throughout the 90 minutes. So really disappointed, bitterly disappointed with that. Um, And yeah, we have to just admit on this occasion that Arsenal were the better team and they fully deserved the win. So... It is a shame. Uh, We expected a lot from this game. Perhaps we were overconfident. We needed to be a bit more humble, but I certainly thought we had a great chance of winning this one, and uh, we haven't. So we have to pick ourselves up at Genoa at the weekend, bounce back there, and then hopefully put in a better performance at the Emirates. Uh, I will be attending the game, so fingers crossed I've got happy memories to come away from it, but we we shall see. Manager rating out of 10, I've given Gattuso a 5. Unfortunately, I think if he's going to take all the plaudits as he has done in recent weeks, and rightly so, when he gets things wrong, I think he also needs to accept the responsibility and the blame as well. For me, it was so obvious from the first minute that Mkhitaryan was having a field day down the left-hand side against Calabria. Uh, I don't know what the tactics to set up was to be playing very central, he had to keep going over across to get to Mikatarian, who had plenty of time and space. Add the fact that Kalasinac was overlapping him and Suso was doing no tracking back. We were just there for the taking and that's where the first goal came from. So Gattuso should have reacted to that quicker for me and I don't think he just got... The, the team weren't prepared to play on such a big occasion and that starts with him, unfortunately. So I've given him a 5 out of 10. On to the player ratings, starting with Donnarumma, I've given him a 6. I don't think he can be blamed for either goal. He produced some decent saves as well to deny Welbeck when he came rushing out from his goal. Uh, so it could have been worse, but he did his part to keep it down in the first half. Um, so yeah, decent performance from him in the circumstances. By no means great, but out of, in terms of the whole team, I think he did a decent job. So I've given him a 6 out of 10. Calabria, I've given him a 5. I think perhaps maybe... A little bit generous. Maybe some might go with a four. He really needed more support for me. I think, as I mentioned, it was just so obvious from the get-go that we were going to struggle on the right flank. And Gattuso didn't do anything to change it. Suso didn't do more. Kessie didn't get across to help him out and put another body there. Calabria was just left too exposed. And, you know, he has impressed in recent weeks defensively. He's looked really solid, but this was a massive step back for him. He really did struggle, so I've had to give him a five. Benucci gets a six. I think the captain was sound defensively for the most part. I didn't think Welbeck caused him too many problems with his pace over the top and in behind. Uh, I think he managed to step up in the second half in terms of creating, got on the ball more. Biglia is never going to take on that responsibility, so it's up to Benucci to do it. I think he did that well. But gave the ball away a little bit cheaply at times as well, but overall better than the most of the players on the, on the pitch, so I've given him Benucci a six. Romagnoli also gets a six. I think he got caught out for the Ramsey goal. I think... 
There was a, a great assist from Ozil, giving credit as well. It was definitely a brilliant assist from him. But Romagnoli kind of got drew, drawn out of position and uh, Ramsey snuck in behind and got the second goal. Apart from that, though, I don't really think he did much wrong again. Similarly to Benucci, I think they both did a decent job in the heart of the defence. The problems really came down the flanks. So I've given Romagnoli a six as well. Rodriguez gets a five. I think he put in a decent shift, but just not assertive enough in either facet of the game. He does a job defensively, but does he really take command on that left flank? I don't think so. I think he kind of looks vulnerable at times. And again, just going forward, he's got time and space on the ball, but his crosses just don't ever seem to get onto a Milan head. And that's really disappointing from him, so I've given him a five as well. Kessie also gets a five. Uh, again, I think I might have been generous because I was tempted to give him a four, but I just thought overall, collectively, no one was good enough. So they've all had to settle for fives across the board predominantly. Just really sloppy in possession. Gave the ball away far too cheaply. Even when he was driving forward, he got himself into good positions. He did all the hard work, but then just gave the ball away cheaply and unnecessarily. There was one where he tried to clear it, skewed it so badly it almost gave Welbeck the perfect opportunity. Luckily, Donnarumma was alert to it and came out and stopped it. But again, just really, really sloppy on the ball from Kessie. He worked hard, as he always does, but... Arsenal were just too found it too easy to get between the lines and that was a problem for him. He just didn't assert himself well enough to give us a foothold in the game and I think it was just a bit more of a headless chicken, really more than anything on Thursday night. So really disappointed with Kessie. Biglia also gets a five. I think he's rescued again. He could have got a four, but he's rescued by the fact that he did improve in the second half. He did get better, but just looked really scared on the ball in the first half, just constantly taking too long with it had options but then dallied and then got put under pressure and almost gave it away in really dangerous positions on more than one occasion. Um, Arsenal got through the midfield far too easily, whether it was Ramsey, Mkhitaryan, Ozil, just not enough defensive coverage like he's been doing so brilliantly in recent weeks. So that was a massive disappointment and uh, another one that really dropped off. So I've given Big Leo a five. Bonaventura gets a five. Unfortunately, the, the trend is continuing. I found him, I thought he was really wasteful in key situations. He had that great chance in the second half, which he sent over the bar. Should have done a lot better. Uh, there was other situations as well where he had a dangerous opportunity, but again, just didn't manage to do anything with it. Uh, wasn't accurate or efficient enough in possession. I think he was better than Suso and Hakan, but that wasn't really saying enough to give him more than a five, so that's why I've stick with a five. Suso also gets a five, but he was one of those three that I thought could have potentially dropped down to a four. He was that bad. Failed to produce in a big game when we needed him. Uh, I don't think he had any joy getting past his marker. Tried his luck cutting in on his left. His delivery wasn't up to scratch. When he did try to go down the, the flank onto his right foot, got out muscled, ball ran out of play. Just generally really disappointed with him. He did show glimpses and you know the, the quality is obviously there. And we do need him to step up against Arsenal in the second leg at the Emirates. So fingers crossed we can see more of that from him in the second meeting. But... On this occasion, 5 out of 10, really, really poor from him. Catrona gets a 5, but I think there's not much more that we could have really expected. He worked hard, as as you would expect from him, but coming up against Mustafi and Koscielny by himself, like I said, that European experience, he, he really had to pay, and I don't think he had any joy. Um, limitations for me were on display. I think he's very good and clever in the box when he's getting service, but in a game like this... When you need more from your top, your man up top, I don't think he delivered, so I've had to give him a 5. And to round off the 11, I've given Hakan a 5 as well. I think he deserves credit for the early penalty incident when he stayed honest. He didn't go down and try to stay on his feet and go round Ospina. Uh, I know some people criticised him and said, you know, go down, definite penalty, potentially even a red card, but fair play to him for being honest. Uh, but nothing else really went right for him. I thought he was tidy in possession. He did the little bits okay, but... When it really mattered, when we needed that killer instinct in the final third, just really sloppy, just not decisive enough um, and just couldn't deliver a big moment for us. So I've given Chalanolio a five as well. On to the substitutes, Kalinic, another five, I'm afraid. Uh, just looked a bit more of a threat than Katrona. I think his running in behind gave Arsenal a different dynamic to deal with and they didn't look as comfortable with it. But again, just that chance that Silva put him in, it was clear on goal. He looked like he was ready to just take a one-on-one -on -one situation with Ospina. Managed to miscontrol it and fluffed his lines again. Uh, it's a big moment in the game. Um, similarly to the Lazio situation where he bottled that chance in extra time. So 
Massively disappointed with Kalinic as well. 5 out of 10. I wouldn't be surprised if he gets the nod in the second leg, to be quite honest. I think Gattuso obviously sees some more in him. And he definitely offers a different threat to Catrone. So we'll have to wait and see if he makes that change. Andre Silva, for me, gets a 6. Perhaps a little bit generous, but I think he added a bit more physicality up top. Almost produced that brilliant assist for Kalinic, but didn't quite come off. And I honestly think he's probably a better candidate to lead our line in the second leg. I think he just does more in terms of Catrone. I think Catrone is great, fox in the box, but if you're looking for a big away performance in Europe, you need your top striker to drop back and link things up, offer a bit more of a creative spark, or, you know, some, capable of doing something a bit special. And I think Silva's got that in his locker. So 6 out of 10 for his little performance tonight, but I think he's a good shout to start in the next one. Barini doesn't get a rating, came on too late for that, but again, just a fresh pair of legs kind of gave us a little bit more energy near the closing stages. So uh, Fabio Barini, no rating on this occasion. On to your Twitter comments. Ngozi Cooper at the real Y Jeff. We, we would need three goals to go through and four if they score. It will not happen. Congratulations to Arsenal for going through to the next round. Yep, yeah, I agree with you on that. I think it was going to be a massive struggle in the second leg. Now we really desperately needed something in the first leg to come away with and, f and have something to fight for. Uh, we didn't get that goal that we need in the second half and I think it's going to be very difficult now to go to the Emirates, score twice, potentially three if we concede. Um, and, you know, Arsenal will have shown vulnerabilities against Ustersons earlier in the, in the last round, but whether or not we can take advantage of a similar situation, uh, I'm not too sure, so we'll have to see. At the Milanisti 11, worst performance of 2018, nothing worked. Wenger seemed to conjure up a performance from four years ago. I'm just so shocked considering our form. However, Reno learns from his mistakes and I'm still optimistic. After all, Ustersons came back at the Emirates, why not Milan? It's crystal clear though that we need to play at a better tempo. That first half was far too slow. On another note, Andre Silva had a good impact. I'm really rooting for him. Had a great pass that cut Arsenal open. Needed Cotrone on the end of it, not Kalinic. Again, Milanisti 11, agree with everything you've said there. Um, just massively disappointed in ourselves. I think Arsenal put in a great performance. You've got to give them credit. Like I said, Wenger rolled back the years. I think they did really well. But just from our point of view, just really disappointed that we didn't show up. We didn't, Like I said, we didn't play with that same intensity, the tempo that we've been setting in recent weeks. Um, and it's just uh, a massive disappointment. Stefano Giacomara at Fananono added that Arsenal were allowed too much space between midfield and defence. Catroni outmatched up top. Really think Silva's creativity is needed for the second leg. Asuso and Chalinolu were a shadow of themselves. Made Wenger look like a tactical genius and it was an unacceptable performance. Agree with everything Stefano said there as well. Um, I think Catrone definitely outmatched. We are a lot better off starting with Silva up top, as you mentioned there, for his creativity but also in terms of just being able to drop back, provide for others, link play up, offering a bit more physicality to put himself about and give Mustafi and Koscielny a different thing, something different to think about. Uh, and I think he will be able to link up better with Suso and Chanlalu on the counter-attack at the Emirates with Arsenal not really under pressure to take the game to us, but still under pressure as the hosts to you know, dominate possession and continue to create chances. So, Silva to start for me in the next one. Uh, Joseph Bacciolieri adds, need to play a bit quicker and play simpler passes in the midfield, trying to do too much. Love the guy, but Jack was bad tonight. First touch seems to be a constant issue with this group. Uh, Joe, completely agree with you as well. Um, we just looked really cumbersome, really lacklustre and just off the pace tonight, even off the ball with our pressing. I don't think we pressed hard enough with enough intensity. But as you mentioned there, just with the ball at our feet, not quick enough, too much hesitancy in our passing in midfield. Um, and Jack, yeah, Jack, I thought I pinpointed Jack as a potentially game winner for us. I thought he was going to be key through the middle. Didn't turn out that way. So we do need to see more from him in the second leg. Hopefully now with the shackles off, we go to the Emirates with nothing to lose, being 2-0 down. We have to go for it and score away goals. Maybe that takes the pressure off the players' shoulders. Maybe they play a bit with a bit more freedom and that suits us. But it's a big it's a big ask. Uh, we're just going to have to wait and see how it goes. Samir Mohamed, uh, first 10 minutes we looked good with promising chances. After their first goal, everything slowed down. Calabria was bad, Biglia was bad, but got better after 65 minutes. I had no clue what Jack was doing the first half and was Kessie even playing. For next week, we need Barini and Silva to start. We could have made a comeback, but two goals before half-time killed our momentum. Please, Jack, stop with these useless long shots. Flop of the match for Samir was Kessie. 
Calabria or Jack, uh, man of the match was no one. Samir, similarly to Milanese the 11, can't disagree with anything you've said there. Uh, the, the momentum was gone after that second goal before half time. I thought if we could just get through 1 0 down, that was going to suit us in the second half. We still had you know, enough encouragement to continue pushing forward, but to concede a third would have been a killer, so that obviously pushed us back. Uh, Biglia, yeah, completely awful for the first 65 minutes, but definitely warmed up to it. Jack, really disappointing. Kessie, really disappointing. Uh, and Calabria in there with your flop of the match candidates. Agree with all that. So massively disappointed, guys. Uh, Rishab Dabari, at Rishab Dabari on Twitter. I think you should do the podcast tomorrow. I can't bear to think of this game tonight. Best to collect our thoughts tonight rather than to think emotionally after a, a night ruined by subpar performances. I was tempted, Rishab. I was going to leave it till tomorrow to reflect on the game. But if we've got to put out podcasts when we win, then I've got to put one out when we lose as well. So... It's not easy, it's massively disappointing, but we have to put it behind us. We've got Jenner at the weekend, we've got to bounce back in that one, produce a reaction, get back to winning ways, get the confidence flowing in the boys again. Yes, this is a bad setback, but we can't let it snowball into something bigger now. We've got to respond against Genoa, get three points there. As for the second leg, am I confident? No. Uh, As I mentioned, I'll be at the Emirates, I'm hoping to see something special. If there's an amazing comeback, fantastic, but... All I want to see, really, at a minimum, is just to go back to what made us so successful. I said before we played this game that to win this tie, we would have to get into Arsenal, take the game to them, put the pressure on and make them crumble. We didn't even see any of that tonight. Arsenal, in fact, did more of that to us, putting pressure on the ball, forcing us into mistakes, being clever with their defending, knowing when to press, knowing when to drop back. They did everything right, fully deserved the win. But as I said, you could make an argument that the game should be out of sight by now. They had so many chances in the first half uh, and we're lucky to still be in it, if you can even say that. So fingers crossed. Let's hope we get back to winning ways on Sunday and then uh, let's hope we can bounce back next Thursday and I'll uh, be giving you updates from the stadium. Thanks for listening, guys. Really appreciate your comments, even on a harsh and bad night like tonight. Follow me on at MilanTalk1 on Twitter and Facebook. Um, But until then... Forza Milan and uh, let's hope we can bounce back. Thanks for listening.